بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of God, the most compassionate, most merciful, we start. It gives me a great pleasure in this Ramadan evening, this blessed Ramadan evening, it's my pleasure to present uh, to the kind participants uh, the two colleagues in this uh, Ramadan uh, Council. It is an issue of coexistence. Coexistence as a controversial privilege in today's world. What do we suffer of considering the controversies of coexistence? How was the Islamic Arab coexistence in the past and what are the present uh, controversies and difficulties? What are the prospects of uh, setting free from this dilemma? Uh, I would like to give the floor for 20 minutes uh, to His Excellency, the Egyptian uh, Minister of Islamic Affairs, Dr. Mohammed Mukhtar Jum'a. He is a graduate from the Islamic uh, Study uh, um, Faculty at Al Azhar. Al Sharif. He also graduated from the Arabic Department uh, of Al Azhar uh, University. Um, he had a PhD and he was a professor of Arabic language and he is now the Minister of Endowments or Awqaf in Egypt. He wrote uh, several studies and uh, uh, books mostly focusing on the Holy Quran. Jalalat al Siyaq wa Atharriyat al Nas al Adabi, Dirasa Tatbiqiya, Fi Daw al Quran, and Al Udul between the old, uh, older uh, scholars and the modern scholars, and also the guide for uh, the teachers uh, in uh, ethics and uh, citizenship. This last uh, title, which is the ethics and uh, citizenship, is uh, strongly related to what we uh, discuss uh, today. I would like to give him the floor for 20 minutes. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Mukhtar Jum'a, the floor is yours. Alhamdulillah, praise be to God and prayers upon the Prophet, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, his followers It gives me a pleasure to convey to you all and to the United Arab Emirates, the government, the leadership, the wise leadership, and the people, the generous people of the United Arab Emirates, the greetings of the great Imam Dr. Ahmad Tayyib, the Sheikh of Al Azhar. I would like also to address my thanks to the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and Researches for hosting me and for choosing this topic uh, to be the topic for tonight. This is a topic that is a challenge not only to the Arab world uh, nor to the Islamic world only, but rather it is an issue for the whole world. In those uh, discussions, in uh, meetings and conferences, we do not want to discuss uh, the theoretical uh, or cultural dimension. Uh, this is not a meeting for uh, raising awareness or for educating. We have to develop those lectures that are really scientific. We should interpret that into practice, into reality. And every time 
I uh, uh, I discuss uh, such a topic, and when uh, the director of uh, the center talked to me about uh, the topic, I think that uh, each and every one of you, the participants, uh, is an expert. Uh, in that topic, and uh, you have uh, uh, the capability uh, to develop a theory into practice uh, and to be influential in your own field. We are quite aware that uh, in the participants there are uh, people of high caliber and who can really develop the theory into practice and have an influence on the decision making. The peaceful coexistence of religions and the philology of coexistence are the issues in what we see today uh, in the international arena, uh, the killing and the wars. These are due to two main issues. First, the greedness and the conflicts on economic gains or power. The other issue which is the focus of our discussion and we as scholars should honestly work on, it is for unfortunately uh, the lack of human uh, sense and the imbalance of the values and the double standards not only double standards, but many standards when considering human rights and causes of uh, nations and peoples. I would like in the outset uh, to present the religious uh, vision in order to stress that there is no culture that could uh, understand all other cultures and embodied uh, them like the Islamic culture. It is known for being really of big understanding. The whole humanity needs to stress the values of human dimensions and the cultural diversity. Actually, we were establishing some Islamic centers and centers for teaching Arabic language affiliated to the Azhar in several parts of the world. And we wanted to stress always to all our envoys that Al-Azhar believes in multiplicity, in diversity, and the Imam Akbar of Al-Azhar in a big conference on Arabic language, he mentioned we do not aim at all uh, to uh, make Europe a Muslim uh, region and we do not want people to get to Islam they have the choice to uh, to have their own religions however we want the people to understand Islam correctly uh, so Islam and Muslims can be respected the different the, of course the freedom of religion is what we believe in uh, the prophet says uh, you cannot uh, force people to become believers they will continue to be different this is what god wants us uh, to have there are many commonalities human elements that can bring all religions together and they can be the pillars for uh, uh, coexistence the origin the uh, religions are uh, of the same origin and uh, prophet muhammad uh, described the prophets as brothers they have different nations and one religion so if uh, um, there are deviations, so it is a problem with those deviators and not with the religion itself or religions themselves. The religion is a relationship between uh, the uh, human being and his God. We know that there are many common elements in all religions. The ethics, the protection of a human being, these are common elements in all religions. Uh, in the Ten Commandments, uh, Abdullah bin Abbas uh, 
mentioned that these Ten Commandments uh, stressing uh, the um, uh, the importance of protecting uh, human beings and uh, also uh, to honor uh, commitments and so on and so, so forth. These are values uh, in all religions. They are not in one sect or in one religion. So God, when uh, honored the human being, he honored the human being for being a human. And uh, God says, Karamna Bani Adam. He didn't say we have honored the Muslims only, or, nor said uh, we mm, honored the believers only. Uh, God said we honored Bani Adam to mean all human humanity. And God said, Man qatala nafsan bighayri nafsan fakaannama qatala nasa jami'an. He who kills one human being and he said one human being and didn't say a believer or a Muslim, he as if he was killing the whole, uh, all people. Prophet Muhammad, when he found a woman killed in a war, he asked who killed her because she she wasn't a fighter and he he also stood uh, in respect uh, or in the funeral of a Jew and when he was told that he is a Jew why do you stand he said he is a human being and he banned us from um, killing any of those who are not fighting, uh, not to kill a, um, a monk in their churches, and he uh, banned the uh, destruct destruction of any buildings. He wanted to protect all those pillars of life. I would like to ask you all, um, is there a religion that allowed uh, the uh, killing of people or uh, allowed lying, fraud, uh, treason, or uh, any of those uh, uh, bad deeds? All the religions call for respect of parents, respect of the uh, property of orphans, respect a human being, protect a human being. Um, all that is a basis for coexistence is uh, a common element in all religions and in all uh, humanity. Uh, this is why I would like to stress that uh, the commonalities, once we get rid of uh, um, economic greed and not to use religion uh, for political or colonial uh, purposes, the coexistence can be there because the origins of all religions are the same. After that, if we take a practical example, we can find the best example in the history of a humanity of coexistence in uh, religions is uh, the deed of al Medina uh, between Prophet Muhammad and the Jews uh, of al Medina. When Prophet Muhammad said that the Jews of uh, Bani Auf, Bani Sa'ida, Bani Ayyub, the Jews of Bani Gusha, and he uh, listed all the Jews in Al Medina, uh, saying that uh, they can coexist with the uh, believers uh, and they are Ummah, they are one nation. And then we can see uh, how. Uh, he wanted the justice to be applied on them. He said before saying that for the Muslims, the, their religion, he said before that for the Jews, uh, uh, their religion. And he honored all the commitments. This deed or this document of Al-Madinah, uh, the Prophet says, 
for the Jews, there is a religion, and there is a religion for the Muslims, and they both uh, should protect the commitments in this deed, and they should um, uh, really fight in order uh, to bring justice, and the Jews spend money with the believers as long as they are uh, fighters, and they have... Um, and those who leave the city should be protected. Uh, all those who stay in the city should also be protected because God is going to be their neighbor uh, for all those who, who choose to stay. And there is another hadith by Al Imam Al Akbar, Dr. Ahmad Al Tayyib, uh, the Sheikh of Al Azhar. He stressed. Uh, that uh, Islam is the religion of justice and it calls uh, all uh, the believers uh, to make sure that there is justice. God said uh, you should always make sure that you uh, rule with justice. The Holy Quran banned uh, any discrimination against uh, even those who are uh, not believers. You should act with them uh, with justice. So the Holy Quran banned us from uh, imp imposing any injustice on those who are not believers, let alone uh, those who are believers. So we should make sure that all people are treated equally and should be invited uh, with uh, wisdom and we shouldn't have uh, clashes uh, nor uh, violence. Uh, the Muslim should deal with those who are uh, not in his uh, uh, or her uh, religion on the basis of what is right. Uh, a Muslim should not um, uh, harm any uh, non-Muslim because Islam banned any abuse of the others regardless of religions, uh, sect, uh, gender, or uh, religion. Uh, God said, if you rule, be, have justice. And he wanted us to say nice words and kind words even to our enemies. He said, tell people. He said, tell people. He didn't say, tell Muslims. He said, tell people kind words. Not only kind words. If you have to choose between what is good and what is better, choose what is better. Because as a Muslim, as a good believer, you should uh, say what is better uh, for the people, for the whole people. The third element uh, that can really help uh, coexistence is the belief in the cultural diversity because God created uh, the world and he created the skies, uh, the heavens and the lands with different languages and with different uh, cultures. This is for you to live together. This is why it is quite wrong not to have this cultural diversity or to have what we call cultural monocided. Uh, you can find somebody who has uh, gained the best specializations in atomic uh, sciences or even in uh, religious sciences. And if he studies only one specialization, he wouldn't have a cultural independent identity. This is why culture or to be educated is to know something about everything because those who don't know about things will make that thing their enemy. We have to listen to each other. There, Some people, unfortunately, have a refusal. Uh, he refuses you regardless of anything. He refuses you from the beginning. He doesn't want to listen to you. He doesn't want to look for common elements that can bring you closer together. This is why we insist on cultural diversity. This is why the cultural um, 
formation is not a secondary issue. It is a, an important issue, and it is part of the national interest. Uh, we wouldn't be exaggerating when saying that the national interest cannot be achieved without a cultural pot that brings everybody uh, together. Uh, there are the households, the schools, the mosques, the universities. All these are pots that should bring us together. And and I have contributed to the development of many um, Arabic language curricula. And uh, I see that uh, 30 to 40 percent uh, of the curricula uh, focus on the uh, openness, the cultural openness, the cultural openness, uh, the cultural diversity in order to really have a broader uh, prospects. The fourth element, it's quite important actually. And here I get into the practice, the practical aspects. We should understand the habits and uh, the cultural heritage of the others. There is uh, a saying. Do not refuse people per se, because if you do not accept the others, it means that the others will not accept you, and you shouldn't uh, alienate yourself. You shouldn't alienate others, because um, clashes will lead to like, uh, uh, clashes, and if you refuse the others, they will refuse you. Undoubtedly, the differences of cultures, uh, habits, and the traditions would uh, uh, generate a difference in uh, rights and responsibilities. I was in a conversation with the Imam al-Akbar with the envoy of the European Union for Human Rights. It was a very clear conversation. Uh, uh, the Imam said the time of imposing uh, issues uh, has gone. Uh, you cannot copy uh, the uh, human rights of the West and impose them on the East because the East is not going to decline its Islamic uh, identity and its Islamic uh, culture, its Islamic uh, heritage. Uh, nor the West uh, would uh, decline uh, its culture. There is only one way. Each party should understand the cultural heritage of uh, the other side, and here we can have good coexistence. Otherwise, we'll have uh, clashes and no, no winners. Human rights in the West that are related to the nature of the societies cannot be imposed on the East and vice versa. Both the East and the West should respect uh, the culture and heritage of the other party in order to have a dialogue of cultures and not clashes of cultures because the West has its heritage, its rights, uh, uh, its responsibilities that uh, should be respected by the East and vice versa. The East has its rights, its uh, uh, vision, its uh, um, attitude that should not be interfered uh, with by the West under any pretext. I was in a visit to Paris, and I focused uh, on the life in Paris. And you know that every culture has its uh, positive and negative aspects. And when I came back from Paris, I wrote two articles in Al-Ahram Daily entitled Why the West Has Developed. I focused on the positive aspects, the practical aspects, and what can be useful for us in the East and what can we learn from the West, um, mostly in uh, the ethics of work. And I deliberately overlooked all 
the negative aspects that I saw and I think that they are not in line with our culture because I look for coexistence. A few weeks later, I met a, an ambassador of the European Union in Cairo and I told her I overlooked all the negative aspects and all the issues that I find that cannot be accepted by, by culture and I focused on the positive aspects. So if you want the real coexistence and to be uh, just to the others, each of us should look at the other with this uh, positive uh, uh, perspective. We should look at uh, what uh, uh, is really positive and overlook what is not in line with our culture. But you shouldn't oblige me to respect your culture at a time when you do not respect my culture. Very quickly, I would l mention the last two elements. In the Arab and Muslim words, we have had uh, some trends that are manufactured by the colonialism. Uh, this is takfir, uh, extremism, uh, fanatics in the name of religion in the interest of those who want to fragment our uh, ummah. I mentioned very quickly that those terrorists, those suiciders, are uh, only aiming at uh, uh, taking uh, uh, the fruits of our uh, countries and they are supported by some powers that can benefit from the fragmentation of the Arab nation. There are many powers today and we know about them because the extremism we see today is not natural it, and it's not at all in line with Islam. It is manufactured extremism and it aims at the fragmentation of our ummah. However, we do not want to blame others. And as the poet mentioned, I do not blame uh, those uh, who are bad. Because they are bad, we should be ready uh, to deal with them. I mentioned this introduction in order to stress that Islam, Islamic culture, Arab culture are uh, not at all uh, to be blamed for this violence used in the name of uh, uh, religion. As the Imam of Al-Azhar mentioned, the killing, the destruction, the bloodshedding is or are committed in the name of religion uh, using takbir or Allahu Akbar, and these are not Muslims. This is why uh, we keep saying we are not like this, and uh, we as Muslims are not like this. And I'm pretty sure that um, people of the world realize that this is not Islam and that these are manufactured uh, forms of Islam because Islam respects the others and very far away from destruction, from killing. And nothing in Islam would uh, 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 call for killing people. And we know that we are the ones that are negatively affected by those extremism. This is why we should exert extra efforts in order to stop such movements. And we know that many countries in the region and many countries of the world, and this is the very last point, suffered a lot of this extremism in the name of religion. And because there are now many uh, people who are not specialists, uh, call themselves scholars, Muslim scholars, and act as a mufti. This is why we met uh, with our colleagues, uh, the uh, ministers uh, of Islamic affairs in the Arab world in order to have a clear stand against any extremism or any uh, misuse of religion in order to achieve uh, 
some benefits. Undoubtedly, all this extremism, uh, terrorism, uh, or uh, um, uh, these uh, uh, practices would ne uh, reflect negatively on uh, the national interest and on our international relationship because we do not want uh, um, to have this phobia uh, of Islam. We stressed that terrorism has no religion and uh, no uh, homeland, no gender, and it will kill uh, those who support it, uh, whether today or tomorrow. At a time when the world has become a global village, what happens in the north affects what happens in the uh, south, and what happens in the east is a, 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 a of an impact on the west. Uh, so w nobody is in uh, uh, is away from the negative impact of terrorism, and we should all act together in order to avoid um, the impact. Undoubtedly. Uh, uh, understanding coexistence and looking for the common elements in light of the mutual respect of all nations and all religions in the same society uh, are part and parcel of Islam, the Islamic culture that believes uh, in coexistence but with dignity. It is uh, coexistence with mutual respect uh, for those uh, who respect our culture. We do not interfere in the issues of others. We do not want others to interfere in our affairs. Thank you and salamu alaikum. Thank you. I would like now to invite our dear colleague Talib Muhammad Yusuf al -Shahi. he is the director of al -Waz or of Islamic preaching uh, in uh, the Authority of Islamic Affairs and Endowments and an expert in Islamic affairs. He has a master's degree in Islamic Sharia in 2011 from Sidi Muhammad bin Abdullah University in Morocco. And he has a number of um, uh, TV participations and uh, many articles. And he is a member in the Sharia board in the General uh, Authority of Islamic Affairs and Endowments. Talib Muhammad Yusuf Ashahi, the floor is yours. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, I start with prayers upon the Prophet and his followers. I would like in the outset to express my thanks uh, to the uh, Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and Research. I'm honored uh, to be a speaker. Uh, in uh, this uh, Ramadan strategic dialogue. I was notified only yesterday, invited uh, to present uh, this uh, paper. Uh, actually, I respect uh, every single uh, word mentioned by His Excellency, the Minister of Awqaf of Egypt. I will just add to that, that when Prophet Muhammad um, was uh, uh, called to be a prophet, he focused on two aspects, an intellectual and practical aspect. The intellectual aspect was a dedication of uh, uh, the understanding of uh, the human being. This is why the uh, Quranic uh, verses and uh, the Hadith stress this aspect. Uh, God said, respect uh, each other because God created you of the same origin. And uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, was an example to be followed on how we should deal with each other. And I will mention some of his Hadith. Um, The problem that can be faced uh, by the world is an intellectual one. It is related to this uh, uh, intellectual approach. It is not an issue of the religion. 
because in Judaism, in Christianity, and in Islam, there are extremists. Uh, there are ex extremists. Uh, in 2010, I was in the United States of America in a conference. There were like 33 uh, scholars uh, from different religions, uh, Judaism, uh, Christianity, and Islam. And we spent eight days discussing uh, the origins uh, and the paths that we should clarify about each religion. In every religion, there are moderates, there are people who are extremists. I recall a Jewish guy came to me and he said, I like you. Why did he use the word like, love? This is the human attitude. I told him, I, I do not consider you as my enemy. I do not hate you. We live in this world because God created us all. How can we live with stability, with safety, with security, with humanity? Uh, we have to live like this. Uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, in every single attitude, wanted to stress this. Somebody who uh, uh, was a drunk um, uh, came to him. Uh, and one of the prophet's followers uh, said, damn this guy, he is always uh, drunk. And the prophet said, do not damn him because he is a human being. He should be respected. He deserves respect. The Prophet mentioned very important aspect. You, as a human being, you should not deviate. You should abuse others because this guy love, likes Allah and the Prophet. So we should look at the human being as a human. And this is why Islam attended to the intellectual level and to the scientific level. This is why the scholars um, are not extremists uh, because they know the true religion. They know the true humanity, and this is why they wouldn't deviate, they wouldn't uh, be extreme. Those who are extremists are not aware of the reality of the religion, whether it is Islam or other religion, because once you know the real religion, you wouldn't be extremist. Uh, because all religions call for justice, for love, for cooperation. Uh, this is also in the Holy Quran, in the Bible, um, uh, uh, all calling for cooperation, uh, for uh, dealing well with others. In that conference in the United States, uh, some of my colleagues said, how can we go to the synagogue or to the uh, church? I went. I visited those uh, uh, religious places and I looked at their uh, Bible and the Old Testament. They all call for uh, treating people well and uh, uh, for respect of uh, human beings. The Prophet uh, dealt with the issue uh, by showing the people that he came as a mercy to all human beings. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And uh, mercy means that you should look at the whole universe and you should look at it uh, and to live in it uh, with, pe uh, with peace, whether with animals, with people, or with uh, uh, environment. Uh, you should uh, understand that God created the universe. Uh, God said, uh, we have uh, told you 
to do what we asked Musa to do and what we asked uh, Isa to do. Uh, and the Prophet Muhammad said, uh, me and the prophets who came before me are like um, a person who build uh, good uh, structure. So God, uh, the Prophet uh, referred to other prophets as builders, as builders of societies. He said, me and other prophets, we build together. We build so the human being can live with peace and in peace. This is why uh, we, uh, as Muslims, were told uh, that we should uh, uh, live uh, with security, and we should guarantee that also to non-Muslims. Uh, Prophet Muhammad said, those who abuse uh, a non-Muslim, I will be against them uh, on doomsday. So the Prophet Muhammad will side with uh, non-Muslims uh, if treated badly. Uh, by Muslims. Your religion does not call upon you to uh, deal with uh, uh, followers of other religions as enemies. Prophet said those who kill uh, um, those who are not Muslim will not go to heaven. Some extremists, when seeing somebody who is not from their religion, they harm them, either verbally or uh, physically. For example, if he is driving his car, he would uh, try to hurt that person. When you know that the Prophet uh, Muhammad and uh, Allah uh, will not accept such a deed and by doing that uh, you are violating uh, what uh, uh, the Prophet has ordered you to do. When Asma uh, uh, came to the Prophet asking him, my mother is a non-Muslim and uh, she came uh, to me. Shall I uh, receive her? Asma is the daughter of Abu Bakr. She came to the Prophet and she asked him. She didn't want to be nice to her mother because her mother was a non-Muslim. The Prophet said, No, you should be kind to your mother because she is your mother. We in the United Arab, Arab Emirates are thankful to God for being an example of coexistence. In the United Arab Emirates, I think we are an example of coexistence, peaceful coexistence. I think uh, mm, this uh, evening is an example of coexistence. Also the uh, Silm or the P uh, Forum of Peace that uh, held, uh, that was held in uh, United Arab Emirates a few months ago uh, are examples and calls for coexistence. You, we have the mosque, we have the church next, next to it. This is coexistence, a Muslim and non-Muslim my religion uh, orders me to deal uh, uh, peacefully with them, um, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. There are many common elements uh, with all people to build the homeland, to build uh, the earth. This is a common element that brings me closer to other. The preservation of a humanity as mentioned by His Excellency the Minister. This is also a common element. There are issues that are the same in all religions to protect people and to protect um, human beings, to protect property. All religions would call for that. All religions uh, 
we all work in order to preserve our souls, our other people's, uh, their property, our property. This is why uh, we have all that in common. Uh, when the Prophet uh, uh, migrated, uh, and we know that they went uh, to Ethiopia, to Al Habasha at the time. And at the time, uh, Ethiopia had uh, a Christian uh, king. And um, the Prophet asked them to go to Ethiopia, to that uh, Christian king, because he knows that he was a person with good uh, ethics and good religion. This is why we see that uh, we coexist. I cannot be enemy to people. God asked me to uh, uh, to eat with them uh, and to get married. We are ordered to correct. Uh, the uh, bad ideas about our religion and the problem we face today is a, a problem of uh, ideas we need really uh, to understand uh, we are in a changing world these uh, satellite channels that ha that are mushrooming you you just uh, uh, listen to one uh, uh, channel and you find people talking badly about others and uh, acting extremely and uh, uh, harming others calling for violence uh, you go to another channel and you find uh, many other practices. I was in a lecture in one uh, school and I told the students, uh, I think you all uh, visit Twitter. And they say, yes. I told them, this uh, brain, uh, which is the most valuable uh, we have, how can you uh, not use your brain? How do you follow? Uh, every uh, uh, channel if they speak badly about your people about you as a human being uh, I told them you shouldn't follow uh, those uh, channels this is a problem they say that uh, those uh, channels are uh, and uh, also not only the TV channels but also uh, the social networks uh, they are misleading uh, the people and uh, this is why we should make sure that our students are brought up and educated well I thank God that uh, we are in the United Arab Emirates have a wise leadership a wise leadership the president of uh, uh, the state, uh, he would uh, uh, come into a conference uh, with uh, a, a, a priest, uh, with a Jewish uh, uh, clergyman, and so on and so forth. And we see this, we see these practices, and we thank God that we are in a country uh, that people come to for coexistence. Thank you, and salam alaikum. After listening to these kind words, yes, Mr. Shehi uh, had a very short notice uh, until yesterday. Uh, uh, Dr. Hamdan Msalam al Mazrui was the speaker. However, uh, at a very short notice, uh, Mr. Shehi was asked uh, to replace him. So we thank him for these kind words. Uh, despite the short notice. I will give myself 20 minutes. My name is Rudwan Sayyid. I'm from Lebanon. I studied at Al Azhar uh, University in the 60s. I am an old man. And uh, I was a colleague uh, uh, with uh, uh, the Sheikh of Al Azhar. And then I carried on my studies in Germany 
and I worked over the past 30 years as a professor of Islamic studies in the Lebanese University of Beirut and also I taught at Harvard, Cambridge, Chicago, Northwestern uh, universities uh, as visiting professors during the 80s and the 90s and I have several books uh, all on uh, the classical Islamic uh, um, uh, intellect and the contemporary Islam. I will just mention some titles uh, I, uh, of my books and then I will start my presentation. Al-Ummah wal-Jama'ah wal-Sulta, the Ummah and the group, the concepts of Ummah in Islam, the society and the Islamic State, the conflict on Islam, and an essay in political Islam, and the contemporary time issues, the Arabs and the Iranians, the Arab heritage. These are two books that issued this year and also also as Minute al Tahir, Ad Din wa Dawla, Islamic, uh, this is uh, uh, political Islam. Uh, I also translated uh, some uh, books uh, from English, uh, French, and German. The concept of coexistence is uh, modern concept in the Arab uh, socio-political uh, studies, first used in the Arab arena by uh, Lebanese uh, intellectuals after uh, the civil war in the 70s of the 20th century. They meant that the Lebanese do belong to different uh, civilizations because they belong to two uh, religions because they are not one people. The Christians have their uh, civilization and the Muslims have their uh, civilizations and they can coexist. Uh, however, they do not want to integrate uh, uh, that... Uh, this is the idea behind the concept of coexistence. We didn't know at the time that this uh, concept was used uh, from a Dutch uh, writer, his name is Philippe Hart, who wrote a book on the different uh, societies in Europe, and he studied the three experiences uh, of uh, um, uh, the Dutch, the Belgic, and the Swiss uh, models. Liebhardt uh, believes or thinks that these societies have uh, uh, cultural uh, multiplicity and diversity, uh, and those societies have chosen uh, a model of coexistence, and it is based on uh, ethnic uh, and cultural uh, diversity that led uh, to uh, political uh, diversity. This is what the Christians in Lebanon wanted to say, that they do not belong to the Arab culture uh, the Muslims belong to. And the Muslims uh, uh, responded by saying there is no coexistence, but there is uh, the Arab Muslim world. So even uh, those who were leftist uh, one responded, uh, um, uh, and we had a civil war after that. These two religions uh, represent uh, two different cultures and uh, civilizations uh, as the Christians uh, see them. And each of these uh, have their features that can have an impact on uh, the way of living and the socio-political um, uh, life as well. They said, for example, that the Christians can live in democratic societies, whereas the Muslims cannot, because their heritage, their cultural and political heritage is brutal. This is what the Christians say. With this realization, with all that discrimination, they called for what is similar to the federalism that exists today in Switzerland, having three different cultures. 
Despite the extreme aspect of this call, it had its reasons uh, because there was integration in the Arab national uh, intellect that led to the uh, unity between Egypt and Syria and the other uh, attempts for unions. And that was very popular amongst the Muslims in Lebanon and most uh, um, Arab societies between the 50s and the 70s. Uh, these uh, unions and this um, idea that the Arab uh, nation uh, should have a unity uh, caused uh, concerns uh, to Christians and to the Akbat or Coptics in uh, Egypt uh, and the Barbar in North Africa. At the time, the uh, Lebanese intellectuals uh, responded uh, by calling for having one nation uh, regardless of the different religions. This uh, uh, conflict uh, in Lebanon uh, and uh, the civil war uh, did not do any justice to the concept of coexistence because it puts uh, uh, the coexistence uh, uh, in uh, the uh, heart of the conflict. And each party had a prefabricated uh, concepts. Uh, the Christians uh, believed that coexistence would mean a submission to the majority, whereas the Muslims uh, um, uh, meant that uh, uh, this is aimed at having uh, uh, divisions in the Islamic Ummah and uh, uh, to claim that the uh, Christian uh, culture is ahead of the Islamic culture. That was the end of the civil uh, war and all those uh, uh, conflicts. However, there is still uh, the basic issue, which is the issue of identity uh, on the one hand and uh, the call uh, for uh, one ummah uh, on the other. We see in the past few years in many Arab and Muslim countries uh, uh, conflicts. Uh, we see uh, two reasons. First, the inability to manage the difference in culture. How, how do we manage this difference? The difference exists for a long while, but we haven't been successful in managing it. And second, how can we have better communication? Because we know there is the uh, state and the regime. The state uh, is a comprehensive approach, whereas the regime, the political uh, uh, system, uh, tries uh, to uh, build a circle uh, to be of supporters. Uh, if there is good communication between the intellect of the state and the intellect of the regime, we can have better management. And unless we have this communication, we will have what we see now in the Arab societies. And the brutality, uh, now we see the Arab uh, uh, societies exploding. Libya, Syria, Iraq, Yemen, and maybe we will see uh, in other Arab countries. This is all due to the uh, inability to manage the differences. Uh, we have always had the uh, concept of coexistence, uh, but uh, now we failed to manage the differences. The coexistence or diversity, uh, this appeared after the Second World War, and as I mentioned, uh, the Dutch uh, uh, 
writer Liebhardt who followed uh, the European states in managing uh, the ethnic, uh, political, and religious uh, um, differences in Belgium, in Switzerland, and in the Netherlands. And you cannot have uh, the democracy of uh, the uh, majority and the protection of uh, uh, the rights of the uh, minority. Uh, this is not enough. Uh, you should have uh, one existence that uh, have uh, this uh, communication. Liebhardt, Moran, and many others consider the individualism uh, that developed in Europe uh, over two centuries uh, as responsible for uh, hitting the identity uh, and for the integration of uh, the majority as done uh, by the fascists in uh, Italy. Europe still witness in Belgium and the Netherlands, in Belgium in particular, we still have some repercussion of uh, these differences. Let's uh, look at uh, the Islamic and Arab experience in managing the coexistence and see the experiences of success and failure in the contemporary uh, modern uh, Muslim societies. And how can we look at the future? Hopefully, I will manage that within the time allocated for me. The Holy Quran uh, call the diversity differences. And it considers this as a basis uh, for uh, uh, societies. There are many uh, verses from the Quran that mention uh, the societies, the umam, uh, the nations. Uh, there is a famous uh, verse in Al-Hujurat. Ya ayyuha al-nas inna khalaqnaakum min dhakrin wa unsa wa ja'annaakum shu'ubara wa qba ila ta'arafu. You people, we have created you of males and females, um, different sects and different uh, uh, nations in order to get closer to each other and to marry each other and to create the earth and to build the earth. We have created you nations in order to learn about each other and not to uh, differ with each other. Different languages, different colors, different uh, uh, tribes should lead to getting closer together and not to conflict. This is a uh, 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 verse in the Quran is really great. Inna khalaqnakum min shu'uba wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu to know each other and to live with each other. Uh, so we, uh, uh, if even we, uh, the Quran said that, that uh, the difference should be a reason for us uh, to uh, get closer to each other, and it develops uh, several conditions um, uh, um, manifested in the concept of a taqwa or uh, uh, be close to God. Uh, the closer, uh, the 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 better believer you are, the closer you are to God, regardless of your religion. Uh, the people were one ummah and they uh, uh, they got uh, differences. However, these uh, uh, differences in uh, the uh, sects or others sh or religion should not uh, lead to conflicts. But if there is a difference or a conflict, they can be solved and managed. The Holy Quran tells us how can we attend to all uh, conflicts. We can uh, attend with negotiation, with justice. If uh, things go beyond particular limits, the Quran mentioned uh, the two main reasons uh, where the differences uh, would be beyond the reconciliation. God uh, ban you from uh, killing those uh, who do not fight you. 
those who fight you in the name of religion and those who uh, fight with others in order to push them out of their uh, land. A conflict that develops into a civil war with uh, uh, apart from these two reasons nothing should be a reason for conflict if you are ready uh, to coexist with the others within uh, the same ummah and outside the ummah uh, you should uh, as long as they do not fight you and they do not force you out of your countries which means that the muslims uh, should not uh, uh, be aggressors and they should not force people of course by the same token out of their uh, land so it's uh, reciprocal uh, if there is uh, suppression and repression this means that uh, a civil war would happen and this is exactly what happens in the Arab world because the inability uh, to manage the differences uh, it is uh, mm, this uh, uh, we have uh, uh, half a million uh, Arabs uh, killed uh, in the past three years F 12 million uh, uh, refugees Four million of them are from Syria alone. It is good uh, to uh, pardon people and to have uh, a good coexistence between individuals and between societies. The Quran differentiates two levels in settling uh, conflicts. First, the relationship between individuals and the uh, uh, culture of the society uh, this uh, level uh, is called upon uh, by the holy quran uh, and it identifies what should you do uh, the second level is the state level all the political power uh, because uh, there uh, there should be justice john rawls the american uh, uh, who developed the American theory of justice, he said that um, the state is uh, uh, or should be based on justice and should make sure that there is justice. So there are two levels, the individual level and the state level. Uh, the uh, state level sh uh, should be the level of justice, uh, the judiciary, the um, justice uh, in dealing with people if two groups of muslims uh, uh, fight each other reconcile between them if one uh, is uh, m m uh, having hegemony on the other you should uh, side with those who are weaker this is an issue of justice in the case of uh, conflict. Uh, the state uh, has to achieve um, the cultural values, the religious values, as the uh, Quran put it. It's good to reconcile. It's good to pardon. Um, these are issues on the individual and on the society level. If it reached the political level, we should have uh, justice. When people came to the Prophet uh, complaining uh, against people who rob them or uh, committed some crimes and... Uh, those people came to the prophet and he said and they told him that uh, we uh, we regret what we did uh, the 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 prophet refused he said that uh, there should be justice so uh, when we have a good judicial uh, system uh, we should ensure justice for all people uh, in the cultural uh, levels can the state uh, or the political regime uh, uh, achieve both uh, justice uh, and reconciliation at the same time? This is a rare example of having both together. It is possible and it is it exists in the Emirates uh, since the days of Sheikh Zayed. Yes, a successful regime uh, can um, uh, do so. Uh, 
you can have at the same time uh, justice and uh, uh, reconciliation and pardoning. There are differences, and these differences should not be the reasons for conflicts within the same ummah. Uh, and when God said uh, you should recognize the uh, differences and respect those differences, uh, you should have this culture of uh, uh, reconciliation and uh, uh, citizenship. Uh, the other differences are those differences uh, uh, between individuals and the groups uh, on interests. If uh, not managed, it will lead to disasters. So this is the action of the state, and each uh, party will accept uh, the just uh, solution. ولكم في القصاص حياة يا أولي الألباب. Once you have justice, you will have life. This this is the Quranic vision. The second part of this paper will focus on how. These Quranic values are manifested in the old Arab and Muslim experience. It is a dialogue between the text and history, the people, the groups of Muslims that act according to their understanding of the Quranic vision and its capability to interpret this vision. I studied the Islamic Arab experience and I concluded uh, that it was successful on the social and cultural uh, levels. It was seen in the Andalusia, in the convality, in the coexistence between the different religions, and there was a culture and civilization, and it is a relative uh, uh, success on the political level because uh, the uh, Khilafa uh, becomes uh, uh, kingdoms, uh, and there are many issues uh, and the times that we neglected the shura or uh, uh, the consultation uh, and uh, uh, those uh, who are with and those who are against uh, both knew the rights and the responsibilities not from what is mentioned in the holy quran only but also from the experience of the uh, Islamic society. I mentioned uh, the different uh, um, uh, definitions of those uh, who are in the opposition and how can we settle the differences between uh, the uh, uh, power or the uh, regime and the opposition. And I also mentioned examples uh, on the um, examples uh, of Ahl Zimma or those who are non-Muslims and how can we uh, deal with their rights and their uh, duties. In the past 100 years, um, many abuse uh, this experience, whether the Westerners or uh, the reformists. Uh, the Muslims and Arabs themselves. I mentioned by the end of uh, um, the old Islamic experience, uh, uh, the book of Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, Sirat al-Mustaqim. You know Ibn Taymiyyah. Uh, he is an extremist uh, intellectual. And in analyzing the Damascus uh, society, uh, the, he found uh, 380 uh, 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 examples uh, where the Muslims uh, 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 transpass uh, the uh, Muslim rules uh, celebrating uh, uh, for example uh, Christmas and uh, taking part uh, in uh, the funerals of Christians uh, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah criticized this. Regardless of his extremism, at least he mentioned examples from Damascus uh, of uh, coexistence. Uh, 
we should not uh, we should study this experience as uh, an experience and it should be an example and should be um, uh, with the aim of studying it, uh, not to condemn it, not to uh, make it sacred, but uh, uh, to understand it and to have the lesson learned from these experiences. These are, there are uh, historical experiences uh, for our ummah, just like any other ummah, so we shouldn't uh, um, uh, have any other religion other than the, uh, uh, the the Holy Quran and the Sunnah. Imam Malik, when uh, sitting, uh, uh, he said that uh, uh, there are experiences that we study uh, uh, only, but uh, uh, even if, they, if, if these are experiences of Muslims, but we should not consider them as sacred. Only the uh, Holy Quran and the Sunnah are the religion. Everything else is an experience. This uh, coexistence uh, there are many uh, Muslim uh, parties and reformists as well uh, they uh, they wanted uh, to follow uh, uh, some uh, uh, scholars the reformists for example wanted uh, to go on the path of uh, uh, European modernism and the Salafists uh, and the extremists wanted um, to go back to the uh, book or to the Holy Quran and the Sunnah regardless of uh, the historical experience that they considered as misleading and uh, not in line with the uh, texts of the Quran. This is a very lengthy issue. Let me reach the conclusion anyway. It is quite clear that we suffer in our societies of uh, uh, the limited culture of uh, understanding the others. And we suffer of the extremism who use violence against others because they do not accept multi um, multiplicity. They do not accept uh, the differences. They do not realize uh, nor uh, acknowledge the human uh, nature uh, um, described by God uh, as many Adam or human beings, uh, they are Muslims um, who are suppressed by those extremists. Uh, this extremism uh, is a result of uh, an extreme religious culture that attracts uh, some young uh, Muslims in the past three decades. We can say uh, that the political um, uh, failure of uh, our states played a role in the emergence of uh, this extremism. It is noticed that this violent uh, um, extremism appeared in uh, the countries where there are uh, military regimes. Mm. Uh, we know that uh, the extremists and uh, the uh, rulers uh, are both violent, as is what's happening in Syria today. And uh, uh, it is quite uh, fair to say that uh, mm, there are successes of some political and Islamic experiences that manifest coexistence and the um, true meaning of justice uh, that is based on general interest in those societies and in those experiences. Uh, uh, we see no violence in the name of uh, religion. The experience of Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan uh, uh, Al Nahyan um, is an experience that produced coexistence that is based on knowing the others and on mixing the interests of the state and the collective uh, approach of the state and the openness uh, to the others. 
the coexistence has become a clear issue in the world culture and this is something that we need to deepen in our cultural uh, sphere not because it is uh, or not because of its present benefit uh, in developing a political, a diversified society, but also because it uh, indicates our historical existence as Arab and Muslims. Thank you. I think we have uh, 15 minutes. Uh, for those who would like uh, to uh, pose questions and uh, make comments. Uh, I think you uh, will present some comments and you have uh, uh, your ideas you would like to express. You have, uh, we have time for five interventions, three minutes for each. Please mention your name and your comment. Uh, Danny Bubshara from Lebanon. Danny Bubshara from Lebanon, Zahla. I'm from Tershish. <laughs> we are neighbors. I would like to ask you, doctor, where did we succeed as a Lebanese experience in the coexistence? Uh, we are Christians and you are Muslims and we have uh, uh, each uh, our share in uh, ruling Lebanon. What are the benefits? What are uh, the setbacks? Are we capable of achieving a reform in order to sustain this political participation by both Muslims and Christians? We will answer all the questions, if there are questions addressed to us uh, by the end. Microphone, sir, please. Uh, is, my name is uh, uh, Ansar Yanif. I'm the Russian ambassador in Oman. I am today visiting Abu Dhabi, and uh, I would like uh, to thank uh, the uh, Center for organizing uh, this uh, dialogue. I worked for 20 years in uh, the uh, Academy of Sciences, uh, and uh, in the past 20 years, I act as a diplomat. I, I was the uh, 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 Russian ambassador of Sudan for six years, and now I am the Russian ambassador in Oman, Muscat. I would like to thank you. I would like to thank the Center uh, for Strategic Studies uh, for taking the initiative to organize this important uh, discussion and dialogue. I would like uh, uh, to uh, thank uh, His Excellency, the Minister, and uh, the uh, scholar from uh, um, Emirates and from uh, Mm, uh, Lebanon. I have uh, written a book. Uh, uh, you can find it on Amazon. It is in Russian language. I know it, says Mr. Sayed. I intend to translate the book into English uh, very soon. I would like to agree with uh, our colleague from Lebanon uh, by saying that this color uh, uh, should be uh, above uh, the uh, situation. Can you understand me? I have a question. What is the relationship between a monopolar world uh, and the culture of coexistence? This is uh, uh, this coexistence or this uh, the dialogue of cultures. This is my question: the multipolar world and the culture of coexistence.
محمد أبو غسلة a political researcher, the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and Researches. I thank you for this, uh, Dr. Jumaa and Mr. Talib uh, presented uh, uh, the coexistence uh, uh, on a religious basis between Christians and Muslims. And when Dr. Rodwan Sayed talked about the historical development, even in the era after colonialism, we see a problem in the coexistence because there is a coexistence. You gave the example of Emirates. There is the example of Tunisia. Uh, Even the conflicts, as happened in Lebanon, I think they are political conflicts and not religious conflicts because there were conflicts between the Christians themselves and Muslims themselves. Doctor, you talked about extremism and the these movements we see now. You mentioned that... These are fabricated, and these are made by the colonialism. I agree there are external elements. However, uh, occupation finished 60 years ago, uh, and we know that there are some external elements, and you mentioned some of them. You mentioned the double standards, for example. I would like to add to what you mentioned, the Palestinian issue for 60 years now, and the double standards in dealing with it. But we shouldn't overlook the uh, internal elements. We should be frank because of corruption, because of poverty, because of uh, many other factors. Um, uh, so these are very internal factors and not external factors. So we shouldn't overlook those factors. Thank you, Khaled Omar. We are really glad to have you with us. Uh, there is a remark. The Holy Quran and the Sunnah, you call it a vision, uh, compared to a human behavior. So every time we talk about a daily behavior, we go to uh, what is sacred in order to justify our behavior. Uh, this is uh, a sort of uh, uh, not recognizing realities. Where is the coexistence in uh, the Arab uh, societies when we talk about uh, a culture with others uh, or common culture with others? I think the minister can talk about this. How do governments uh, deal uh, with the terrorism in one country and this extremism? Should we, for example, uh, uh, reformulate uh, those uh, uh, peoples? Dr. Rodwan Sayed, is there a solution for this conflict between the intellect of the state and the intellect of the regime, political regime? You mentioned some uh, uh, experiences in the Arab heritage uh, on, on coexistence. There were several uh, um, practices uh, and theories in order to justify the behavior of the ruler, for example. And, uh, for example, Jamiyat uh, Ulama al Muslimin at certain times in Algeria, for example, uh, 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 was acting uh, based on political. Uh, uh, issues. For example, they considered at the time those who have a nationality uh, other than Algerian uh, nationality as uh, uh, foreigners and atheists. Now uh, we don't see this. Uh, uh, we should deal with the culture of coexistence uh, based on what others have as well. I can have two more interventions. the fourth row.
السلام عليكم is the problem of coexistence an issue of religion is it a problem because we are Muslims if the uh, region for example has Arabs who are secular would we have a problem do we have those extremists because of the religion or is it genetic uh, uh, Arab uh, uh, feels, for example, inferior and they should coexist. Uh, whereas when uh, somebody who is uh, from the West, when he comes to the Arab region, for example, we do not ask him to coexist. So is it a, f a sense of inferiority by the Arabs? Assalamu alaikum. Khaled Abidat from Jordan. Thank you for the informative presentations. I have a few remarks. First, undoubtedly there are attempts, serious attempts, by several parties to distort the image of Islam. And I think they've been successful. Uh, now Islam is doomed to be terrorist and Muslims are described as terrorists. And there is a general understanding of Islam by other societies as such, as terrorism. Uh, second point, despite uh, the discussion of coexistence and peaceful coexistence, uh, there is uh, uh, the clashes of civilization also. Samuel Huntington, in his book, clashes of civilization stressed this conflict. His Excellency, the Egyptian Minister of Awqaf, mentioned that the Eastern civilization has its features and characteristics, and the Western civilization has its features and characteristics. And each of these two civilizations should understand the other uh, the Henry Kissinger uh, mentioned in one of his books uh, the shark shark and the gharb gharb the west is west and the east is east and they wouldn't meet at all so how can there can be a coexistence I think what we have in practice is the clashes of civilization and not coexistence uh, one last point addressed uh, to the Minister of Awqaf. I am as a Jordanian uh, Arab Muslim. I do not see the role of the Azhar. Where is the role of the Azhar regarding what's happening to the Muslims? We will stop here because we wouldn't have time. Uh, I will give the floor now to the speakers uh, to attend to what's uh, being presented. I'm sorry that we cannot take any more uh, questions nor interventions. We will give five minutes to the speakers in order to attend uh, to the six interventions or questions. His Excellency the Minister. The uh, Russian ambassador asked you about coexistence, the dialogue, and the relationships. And uh, there is also a question by Mohammed Abu Ghazna, who asked you also, and Khalid Lubaydad from Jordan, who asked you about the role of Al Azhar. Start with that. <laughs> No, I will conclude by that. Very briefly, I would like to say there is a collective understanding of wise people that coexistence is possible. 
and it is not uh, the collective attitude of the participants only, uh, but I think uh, all those who live in this country uh, of different religions, I think they realize that there is a reality that is deeply rooted in Emirates for coexistence of people regardless of their nationalities, their colors, their beliefs. And I think each and everyone here in Emirates uh, sees no barrier in the face of this coexistence. So I think this can be an example. The world does not uh, have uh, space for any more conflicts. Even those scholars who say that the East is East and the West is West and they cannot meet, this shouldn't be the case. We should um, be hopeful because without hope, we know that we are doomed to fail. The problem is not in the religion. We, we do not have the theory of conspiracy. When uh, you say uh, some feed uh, the terrorism, this is to stress that the true Islam is um, very far away from those extremism and those extremists. And our true religion uh, does not uh, accept these extremists. And uh, I mentioned that there are internal and external factors. Unfortunately, the religious uh, conflicts, uh, had they been only religious issues, the uh, solution could have been easy. However, the problem is that most uh, uh, conflict, um, religious conflicts and sectoral uh, sects, uh, uh, conflicts are conflicts that are directed uh, uh, towards uh, politics and power. Mm. Uh, it is employing or using religion for economic and political gains. And if we truly and honestly could distress that the religion is for God and we uh, keep it away from any political um, uh, use, we could avoid many problems. The problem is not in the text. I recall a conference uh, entitled Civilizations uh, uh, in the Interest of Humanity. Three words. Three, three speeches, actually, uh, by the Imam of Al-Azhar. Uh, there was a conference here in Abu Dhabi and a conference in uh, Bahrain and uh, also a speech in uh, a conference uh, on fatwas and its impact on international relations uh, in Egypt. In Al-Bahrain, when we were writing the recommendations, uh, 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 Minister Khalid bin Abdullah has invited me uh, to draft the recommendations. And in the recommendations, uh, there was a mentioning that a human being should be honored. So I wanted to support that by saying this is the true essence of Islam. Because God says we have honored Bani Adam or the human being. Uh, the minister told me uh, we will uh, write uh, the meaning and we will not mention the verse of the Quran because I want to carry this recommendation to the United Nations and we want uh, this uh, to be the culture of all people and not only the culture of Islam. We want to, to start from um, human uh, 
bases and not necessarily from a Muslim basis. As for the role of Al Azhar, I can uh, tell you that it will come back very strongly uh, in uh, its participation, in its uh, um, teaching of its uh, students now, uh, in order to resume its status uh, in disseminating the true Islam. Um, this year, we have graduated 500 um, uh, students and uh, some of our students uh, now uh, master uh, two foreign languages in addition to Arabic in order to become our envoys. There will be 500 envoys of Al Azhar this year to go to different parts of the world in order uh, to disseminate uh, the true Islam. Al Azhar. Uh, will uh, continue to exert uh, efforts uh, because we have a cause. It is an Islamic uh, belief uh, cause uh, to present Islam uh, in the best way to the world. And we are also uh, having this uh, human attitude that um, God said, uh, we have sent you as a mercy to all people. He didn't say uh, as mercy to uh, Muslims alone. This is the role of Al-Azhar. It is disseminating peace in the whole world. Al-Azhar is not working single-handedly. There is cooperation from countries uh, such as the Emirates and Bahrain. These countries are working in partnership with Al-Azhar. Thank you very much. Two minutes. I will start from uh, what uh, uh, being concluded by the minister. We can enjoy what being mentioned in the Holy Quran and still have our Islamic experience. Uh, but in practice, Islam exploded in our hands and because of our hands, in our states and in our uh, religious institutions and we should face that explosion in my last book i mentioned three steps that should be followed or done first separating the religion from the state we have uh, Mm. Uh, Islamic uh, calls saying that or those extremists saying that they want to have a religious state and this is a destruction of the religion before being a destruction for the state because the religion is religion and the state is a state we should have uh, a, a religious revival in order to reassess the concepts in order to dismantle this uh, 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 um, coalition between uh, religion and the state. The religion is the Sharia. Ah, the Sharia ah is the religion, and God told us, "Al yom akmaltu lakum dinakum," or today I have finalized uh, your religion. So the religion is complete, and the Sharia ah is complete, and. Uh, uh, they are not missing anything. They do not uh, uh, need the Muslim brothers or any other sect in order to complete it. The state is for managing the public affairs. It is not uh, for religious purposes. The society hosts the religion. These are concepts uh, that prevailed in the past 60 years are distorted and we need a religious revival in order uh, to reassess the concepts. Um, second, the religious institutions should gain back their terms of reference because they lost that, because they were lackeys. Uh, in every place uh, there was a suppression of the religious institution. We see extremism, violent extremism. Uh, the more uh, uh, the state uh, took care of the religious institution, the better uh, we see the situation now and we see no fanatism nor extremism. There is the example of dependence uh, or deletion 
of the religious institution and the amicable relationship with the religious institution. And we can choose out of that. And we see from experience that when the state deals well with the religious institution, we have no extremism. We want the religious institution to be free from the pressure of the state and from the pressure of the extremism. The uh, people want uh, their uh, uh, children to be taught by religious people and not uh, uh, by the state. They want uh, the religious institution to teach their uh, children. Uh, this, the religion should be taught by the religious uh, institution, and this is the role of the institution. Uh, the previous uh, uh, Sheikh of Al Azhar, uh, Dr. Tantawi, God bless his soul, mentioned we were arguing over a lecture he presented entitled uh, uh, Moderation in Islam. It was quite uh, a thorny discussion, I would say. And after attacking me, uh, he said, We the graduates of Al-Azhar have uh, functions and missions. Our functions, we are trying to perform to the utmost possible, which means worshipping and teaching. The missions, we do not do anything. We are no longer the uh, owners of uh, uh, the, the message. We are missing that the point, he said. There are the three uh, institutions, the Egyptian, the Saudi, and the Moroccan religious institutions. If we can liberate these institutions and enable them uh, to perform their functions and their missions, we... Uh, uh, we need uh, to host this religion, otherwise we will see more extremism. The third issue, or the third step, in addition to reassessing the concepts and saving the religious institutions and giving, giving, give them back uh, their role, uh, we should have good governance. Why do people follow this illusion of religious uh, uh, approach? Because the military regimes uh, in the past 30 years uh, were brutal, were not having justice. So people dreams uh, now that uh, the uh, religious state will give them that justice. When we have good governance, when we have uh, a uh, uh, good state, good regime that manage uh, with justice, as we mentioned. And when we say it is the basis uh, for the uh, work of the state, when we have uh, good regimes, we do not want regimes such as the regime uh, in the United Arab Emirates. We cannot dream that much. Um, that just the minimum we need. People will know that uh, they would have a good governance, good rule, uh, rules of law. These uh, three steps are necessary in order uh, to save our religion and our states. Thank you for attending and for listening, and salam alaikum.